But this is the real reason you put LSDs in any car. Donuts! Today I'm working out in the garage trying to put the rear disc brake conversion kit and the LSD in the truck. But first I'm rebuilding the junkyard LSD. Here's the ring gear. I just got it off. Basically all I did was loosen these bolts and tapped on the top of the bolts and the ring gear just popped off. But I will note, you see I broke those few bolts there. I will note, these are left-handed threaded bolts. Um, after I broke the third one, I was like, man, this can't be right, something's wrong. And then I noticed a big L uh, marked on top of these. I'm like, are those left-handed threads? Yep, sure are. So, um, but this is from the Junkyard LSD, which I do not plan to mix gear sets. So I'm gonna take the ring gear off of the carrier in the truck and put that ring gear on this carrier because uh, the carrier in the truck is an open diff. So now what I've gotta do, I've got, uh, I've got brand new Spicer, Spicer uh, clutch packs specifically for this track lock differential. So they're soaking in uh, friction modifier right now they've been soaking in there for I don't know an hour or so something like that and I'm just gonna let them soak until I get around to put them in there so now I've got to figure out how to get the uh, how to get the spider gears out so I can um, change the clutch packs and I'm not exactly sure how to do this uh, I've actually never worked on a carrier before never uh, how to do this um, so you guys are going to come for the, along for the ride and see me struggle and fail a few times. So the best I can come up with is try to spin the larger um, outside spider gears to try to force them to uh, spin the inside ones. Let's see. Figured it out. If I just take a punch and get it as flat as I can and just Yep, there we go. There we go, there's one. Oh, there goes the thrust washer for that one. And this is just an old bolt from my random collection of old car parts that I've built up over the past 15 years working on cars. Oh, look at that. That's just falling out of there. I don't even know. That's like six or seven inch long bolt. And what I did is I have these... Uh... I don't want everything to fall apart. I have these... A whole bunch of these washers from uh, putting in shocks so these are the washers that go on the top of a shock that kind of sandwich that uh, uh, that bushing on top of a shock in the junkyard I could see these were broken so that's why I went ahead and ordered a uh, clutch pack kit I only paid, uh, I think it was $30 for the, uh, the carrier. They had a half price day at, uh, at the junkyard. Wow, those clutches are just, just toast. The gear looks fine. The 
gear itself looks fine. It is completely shattered. And I don't know, oh, it's got more than one piece. There's a, another missing piece. I don't know what causes that to happen, to be honest. But boy, it is, it is toast. Let's see how this other guy is. It'll come out. The other one just fell out. Oh, this one's broken too. Great thing about working on these kind of differentials and stuff like that, these things are like, I'm not gonna say bulletproof, I mean, cause there's tolerances and stuff, but man, they are tough. Yeah, that one's, that gear looks like it's in good shape. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what makes that happen. I don't know if it's poor maintenance, I don't know if it's just out at the drag strip beating on a thing, I don't know. I, uh, This one's not, yeah, these clutches are toast. And they're all shiny. Hello. This, do, this doesn't look good. Pretty sure this thing is toast. And I'm pretty sure that's why the, uh, those rings were broken. looks like their clutches got locked up somehow and just spun inside the carrier so hmm not really sure what I can do about that looks like this this carriers junk Upon further inspection, it looks like I might be okay because those actually hold the, uh, it came with new ones of these. Those actually hold the um, clutches in place. And if I look at one of these compared to one of the new ones, uh, you can see it basically cut those things in half. So um, I think I'm just gonna put it in there. Um, <coughs> and see what happens. I've got the parts. Um, a new carrier is two or $300. Um, the junkyard doesn't have any more of these um, trucks right now. So uh, <laughs> I guess I could put it in there and see what happens. Okay, so I got everything cleaned up. bought me some brake cleaner and scrubbed everything down, get all the rust and old <clears throat> nasty fluid off of it so now I'm just reversing the process pretty much so <clears throat> making sure that this uh, big washer goes down toward the gear because that's how it was when I pulled it off just slides down on there and these guys go over the ears I've already got one side in there because that was the easier side. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this sideways like that. Figured it out. Figured out how to get the spider gears in here. So I've already got a bolt going through here. And the bolt has a point on it. Well, that point is lined up. So it sits right on top of the axle just perfectly. And if I take both of those things in there, stand on the axle just rotates it'll spin them in like that now they're right over the point where the thrust washers are now I gotta figure out some way to get the thrust washers in there you know what if I put another bolt through there and compress this that'll give me some play so that's what I'll do let's see give you a good shot hopefully you can see that but there's a bolt lined up right there dead center of the shaft and the shaft has a little dimple in it. So now what I'm gonna do is take it over, take the center section over to the vise 
put another bolt through this clutch pack and compress it. And hopefully that'll give me what I need. Enough space to get those thrust washers in there. Bullseye. Now that I've got the uh, clutches. Yep. Hey, hey. Look at that. Got a little bit of lube on both of these washers. They just slid down in there. Compress those clutches. And it worked. Put me a bolt through here. Bolt through here. And get my thrust washers in. Use the axle to spin the spider gears in. Worked like a charm. So what I'm gonna really try my hardest to do is take this ring gear off of the truck and put it on that carrier over there. Um, but to do that, I need to measure the backlash and make sure I end up with the same backlash. So what I'm getting is about nine thousandths. So I'm getting about nine thousandths, which is actually kind of on the hairy edge of the spec. The spec is, uh, I just looked it up in the, on a Chrysler nine, point, uh, nine and a quarter inch rear end like this one. It's uh, three thousandths to ten thousandths. So I'm right on the edge of the spec, which is okay. I mean, the truck has 150,000 miles on it, not a big deal. Um, I'm still in spec, which is good news, so. All right, so how you get the axle out of there is there's a little through pin or through bolt and these things are hideous about breaking. Oh, oh, please tell me that. These things, I mean, I don't understand who designed it or why they did, but they are so brittle it's ridiculous. I can't tell you how many times when I was a mechanic I saw these little tiny um, bolts break. So that's why I get like the tiniest wrench possible. and. <laughs> and barely put any pressure on it until I feel it come loose. Because if I can turn it with this tiny little wrench, that means it's not broken, it means it's not bound up or anything like that. But anyway, so you take this bolt out. This huge pin right there comes out. You push the axle in, those axles come together and there's a little C-clip. Slide the C-clip off, the whole axle comes out. It's literally the only thing holding your entire rear wheel to your vehicle is a C-clip. It's a really hefty C-clip, but it still always blew my mind that that's the only thing. So when you go around the corner, the only thing keeping your wheel from sliding out is this C-clip. So work on this bolt and then come back to you. All right. That guy's out now. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> you see? It always cracked me up. Ugh. And then you got gear oil in here, which is just nasty. That little C-clip right there is the only thing holding your axle in when you go down the road. And you've got to be careful, too, because it's floating. So it's supported here and in there. And if you just pull it, it'll flop down and you could chip uh, the edge. And you'll also let it sit on this seal kind of weird. Let me go get a paper towel. You also don't want to scar the bearings because there's a set of wheel bearings right there. There you go, whole axle right there. So if you look right through there, there's actually some threads. And if you look through there, there's space now. Well, if you look through here, there is no threads. Let's see, I don't know, you can see that, but there's no threads, but there is right there. It's because there's a, a preload screw right there. And what I did is I backed this side all the way out. It's like a four foot all thread or something. Uh. And I've got a 35 or a 36 millimeter nut, I can't remember. But it goes, it basically goes all the way through here into there. And I've got a big washer on the back right here so that it stops and a small washer on the front right here so that it, it seats inside that thing that screws. And then I can, um, I can do the same thing over here. I have a washer right here so when I put a socket it stops. 
So this was like a $6 worth of parts. I think the all thread was like four bucks. And I think the nuts were like 50 cents a piece. Um, and I had all that other stuff in my toolbox. That is actually an axle nut. And those washers were just um, washers I had in my toolbox that I wallered out to the size of the all thread. Actually getting hot in the garage, so I opened the garage door so now I get a little bit better light. So I'm gonna undo this side first because this one, the bearing race, should be held in place by the um, preload cup. Mini persuasion. We go to the right. Let's see if, see if my idea is going to work. Oh, this race is stuck. Dang it. to try to adjust both sides that can get really annoying really fast oh there we go just because it seems like it's out don't mean it's out because there's still a little tiny lip oh dang oh 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 Yes, he worked. Uh, oh, freaking A, this thing's heavy. Okay. Here's the left side. Here's the right side. All right, I'm gonna go take this carrier over there to the bench. There's like a octagon side, and the, that thing is actually threaded. So when this thing screws in this way, and this one screws in this way, that's where you get your preload to center it on your pinion gear. And that's why I put that washer on there so it would stop right where I needed it to and it wouldn't go all the way through. So these are left-handed threads. <laughs> Don't forget. So righty, loosey, lefty, tidy. And then just tap on them. I'm gonna keep these bolts because I know my differential was taken care of uh, I put good fluid in it and everything so it should have been fine it wasn't all black and nasty all right so now just a matter of getting this guy back on there and I should should be able to just thread thread these on here and then draw the bolts up and that should take care of it found this website and uh, it's got all the goodies on there um, for a Chrysler nine and a quarter rear end um, so and the reason, what I find funny is that it's, uh, the rear end is all in standard. Everything else on the truck is in SI. And it's because they've been using it since the 70s, actually the late 60s. And then they used it all the way up until 2010. So you get, you get back there, and these are the vehicles they use it on. But you get back there and everything is in uh, uh, metric. Or I'm not, I'm sorry, in uh, imperial, but everything else on the truck is in metric. So here we go. So... Um, there's my six to ten thousandths, and I remember I was at nine thousandths, so I'm, I'm safe there. Ring gear bolt torque is 65 foot pounds, carrier bearing caps is 75 foot pounds. Um, and then I also got uh, five or I got three quarts of 7590 oil. All right, so now to get the ring gear on there, all I did was uh, I did four bolts. Just kept going crisscross, turn, 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 until they, until they all stopped. Now I've got uh, got my torque wrench set at 65 foot pounds, uh, going in the 
opposite direction. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a star pattern. There we go, ring gear successfully changed. Now, it's gotta go back in the truck. in there just snug. I'm at 16. This is way too much. Crank it down just a little. Alright, what did I get? Now that. Ooh, that might be that might be dead nuts. So the sun has set, but I still am working. Uh, so now I've got everything to the point where uh, I'm gonna put the differential cover back on it. So just wiping it out real quick, getting all the last bit of debris out. Bit of gunk on here. So basically I'm just gonna um, I've really cleaned up the edge here and I use uh, black uh, Permatex maximum oil resistance and it's high heat oil resistance so I don't know why you would buy anything else but people do I guess um, so that's what I use plus it's black so when the edges spooge out a little bit you don't see the uh, orange because what they use from the factories they use orange which I mean it would work but black is just good to have in your toolbox so that's what I'm gonna use spooge a little bead around on the inside of the holes clean everything out and then bolt it down and that's it so it's late January and it's 60 degrees outside and sunny beautiful day um, on my lunch break and I got the uh, scraping sound fixed on the truck so brakes are good LSD is good and there's a little stitch of woods right outside of my neighborhood where I live so I just figured I would go through the dirt road that's <laughs> up here in the woods. It's a service road that goes to the top of the hill where the water towers are. Um, there's no signs that say prohibited ac uh, access or anything like that. No no trespassing signs or anything. Um, and this is where I always have to put it in four-wheel drive because of uh, the, the terrain. So I'm going to give it a try and see how the LSD does. 